Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God forever. Ready to receive. Yeah, you see, those are they're rolling in here in waves. Amen. Rolling in here in waves is the presence of God. Amen. And it'll be on you to jump in and enjoy it. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm ready to receive. Glory to God. I have a confident. I have a confident. I have a confident. I have a confident. I have a confident, joyous expectation of something good. Yes, that's hope. Biblical hope. A confident, joyous expectation of something good. The word of the Lord to Faith Bible Church for 2022. Thank you. Is launch out. Amen. Now, that's going to mean something different for each of you individually. But I know what God is speaking to us as a ministry. Amen. We good? Glory to God. So we want to welcome everybody that's joined us online and that is joining us online in the different social media platforms. It's a privilege to open up the Word of Life with you and administer the Word of God to you this morning. We want to encourage you, however, to come and join us here at 28 Chapel Street. Hallelujah. On a, on a Friday or Friday morning. On a Sunday morning at 1030, Friday nights at 7. Amen. And get under this corporate anointing. We'll make you most welcome. Right. If you've missed any of these messages, any of these services, you can go to faithbiblect.org. All the messages are uploaded. Church, you can listen to them as often as you would like. Yeah. Faith comes by hearing yeah. and hearing by the Word. Yeah. How does faith come? By it comes by hearing the Word. Hearing the word. Amen. The world has faith. If you didn't know that, the world has faith. Yeah. Their faith is formed by what they see, what they hear, how they feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. A Christian's faith, however, is formed by the Word of God. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. The Word of God is designed and intended by God not to hit your head. There's far too many Bible school smarties out there right now teaching and preaching and hitting the head and missing the heart. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Want to show everybody just how much they know and how smart they are. Well, I think that education is great and good and wonderful, but listen to me. I will take the anointing and hit in the Spirit yeah. every single yeah. time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yes. And He has yes. anointed me yeah. to preach this gospel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Word of the Lord to Faith Bible Church for 2022 launch out. is to launch out. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, let uh, me parenthetically insert that that is going to cause many of us to be uncomfortable. Because God is not interested in the comfort of your flesh. I said He's not interested in the comfort of your flesh. He's interested in the salvation of your soul. He's interested in getting this message into the 47,000 souls that call the town of Wallingford home. Right. Amen. I could build a 10,000 seat sanctuary and run four services on a Sunday morning and not get everybody in the town in. You listening to me? I, that's just one town out of 169. There's 3 million souls in the state of Connecticut. Less than 3% attend some type of church service on a regular basis. And regular basis, according to Barna, according to the world, is once a month. Wow. The whole once a month. Right? So, if your life is a ship, and it is, if your life is a ship, and you spend... Three and a half weeks out of a month getting holes drilled in your ship by the world. Yeah, come on. And you expect that going to church for an hour and a half one particular well, Sunday well. is going to fix all that. You are sadly mistaken. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Do not be squeezed into the mold of the world. Don't be conformed by the pattern of the world. Don't be so easily conformed. To the way the world does things and the way the world acts. Right. It's easy to act like the world. Right. You know, you were doing it on the way here. Somebody cut you off and you were you dirty, no good. You're feeling the no good. It's easy to act like the world. So this word, launch out, to Faith Bible Church is going to mean different things for each of us individually. Right. Amen. 
it means something for the ministry. But here's what I'm going to warn you. It's not about the comfort of your flesh. Oh, God will never ask me to do something I want to do, don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. I go to Haiti because I love God. Are you listening to me? Glory to His holy name. So, we said this to you last time that uh, there is certain numerology in the Bible. I'm not a big numerologist, but I thought it was interesting for this year that the, the number 20 uh, in the Bible uh, is associated with a trial or getting through a trial, but there's a reward at the end of it. And that 22 is the double of 11. Which means that there is double power, directed power, towards chaos and destruction. 2022 will be a more difficult, challenging year than 2021. Or 2019. In the natural. You see, a lot of preachers won't tell you this. They just want to tell you the good part. I need to give you broccoli. So that when terrible things begin to happen... Your faith doesn't get rattled. Oh, pastor said this was going to be a great year. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? <laughs> right? Economy is going to go up and down. Come on, somebody. Do we need to talk about Corona? I don't want to give you the numerology on that. You'll start laughing. It has nothing on you. I said it has nothing on you. They call it Corona because it looks like a crown. The virus itself is bad information. Did you know that that's all a virus is? Mm -hmm. It's bad information? Mm -hmm. Did you know you have good information? Yeah. Yeah, what's your good information? Good. Somebody say, it's that book. Mm -hmm. it's, that book. Mm -hmm. it's that book. The Bible is good information. The Bible says in John's Gospel, the first chapter, it says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God, the Word was with Him in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And then in verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld Him as the only begotten of the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus stepped onto the planet. Amen? Yeah, sure. So in the natural, it's going to be a wild ride. Yeah. But it's not going to come near you. Amen. Thank you for those three amens and that enthusiastic head shake. I said, it shall not come near you. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? Very interesting in the Jewish calendar, which starts in September, which is God's calendar, by the way. I didn't know this. I was studying this week and some of this came up on me. It's a Shemitah year. Right? It's a Shemitah year, right? Which means a year of release and recovery. Right? In the Jewish tradition, every seven years, all of your debts were wiped out. Right. Somebody say, I got a hold of that one. Mm -hmm. All of my debts are wiped out. Yeah. Come on, say, come on, get a hold of it. Yeah. All of my debts are wiped out. I'm released from illness. Right. I'm released from bondage. Right. I'm released. It's a year of release and recovery. Yep. Come on. A year of release and recovery. But here's the interesting thing. There is a month that is added to the Jewish calendar to see to it that all of the Jewish festivals fall on the same day. It's called the month of Adar. In other words, this particular Shemitah year is a leap year. You go, well, what's the big deal about a leap year? Leap year, I'll tell you what, there's two Adars in this leap year for the Jewish calendar. Yeah, you know what it means? The month of Adar? It literally means joy. It literally means joy, which means there's double joy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I need to parenthetically insert, joy is not an emotion. That's right. Joy is not, oh, happy day. <laughs> joy is Jesus on you. Joy is knowing that no matter what happens, and no matter how long it lasts, Jesus is still with you. That's right. That when... If we would just lift up our eyes, I got so much in me and it's yeah. all bouncing, yeah. trying to get out. If we would lift up our eyes and understand from eternity's perspective, then we would understand what the Apostle Paul writes when he says, these short-term, temporary... Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Listen to me, folks. If you're counting on the political system to rescue you, I heard it. <laughs> They have no interest in rescuing you. They have no interest in helping you. 
They're interested in keeping you afraid. Come on. Yep. And showing that it's somebody else's fault because that's how you win elections. Mm -hmm. You blame that person or that one or that group or those and that and listen, that's how you win elections. Right. So if you're counting on the political system, you're in trouble. If you're counting on the education system to rescue you, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, somebody. Right. There is only one system that you can count on. Because you see it going over all the earth right now. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And the only thing that will be left is the thing that can't be shaken. The kingdom of God. That's it. Listen to me. If religion was your God, right? Rob and I were talking about this the other day. If religion was your God, then this little thing that you can't see shut down your religion for two years. If education was your God, then this little thing that you cannot see shut down the education system for two years. If money is your God, this little thing that you cannot see, you shut down the stock market and finance right. for two years, and it's been riding this yeah. Yeah. Are You listening to me? Little tiny thing that you can't see. Right. Because you are counting on the wrong thing. Right. Instead of counting on him. Relying on him. That's the definition of joy. Knowing it's all working out. For my good. <laughs> Amen. Romans 8.28. It says, Romans 8.28 says, God works out all things for my good. To those who love Him. In other words, to those who trust Him. So there's, there's a qualifier in there. You have to trust Him to work it out. You can't be moved by how you feel. You can't be moved by what you see. You can't be moved by CNN, ABC, MSNBC, Fox News, Breitbart, OAN, you can't be moved by them. Right. They're not interested in helping you. Nope. But your God yeah. is interested Amen. in helping you. Hallelujah. You better learn how to get your praise on in 2022. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You better learn how to get your praise on. Amen. The number 22 is also a symbol of God's directed power. The Hebrew alphabet, pay attention, somebody say I'm listening. I'm listening. The Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters in it. Yes. Those letters compose God's word. According to Psalms, the word is a lamp. Stay with me, yeah. which is considered a source of light. Right. So if you believe in God, you're never going to be in the dark. Right. Because right. the word of God is a lamp right. to your feet and a light to your, pas to your pathway. In the Old Testament, you'll find 22 books written to Israel. Hmm. Which means that God's word is his light to his people. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. So let me bring it to the New Testament for you. You ready? The Gospel of John, the word light is mentioned 22 times. Wow. And it's described, hallelujah, on the 22nd time. You ready? Yes. Somebody say, my mind's ready to be blown. The 22nd time that you see light in John's gospel, it says Jesus, talking about himself, is the light of the world. Yeah, yeah. Would tell me that what you believe matters. Yeah, yes. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then you believe the right thing. Yeah. Ha hallelujah. Oh, so, yeah. 22 times the word light is made mention of in John's gospel. And the 22nd time is... Uh, uh, describing that Jesus is the light that entered into the world, and then I thought she was going to steal my thunder. What were the last words that Jesus was quoted from saying on the cross? He said, My God, my God. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What does Psalm 22 start off with? My God, my God. Well, you must learn how to praise 
yeah. in the midst of the deepest, darkest, most difficult circumstance you're going to. Listen to me, church. There is an untapped power in your praise. You want to release power, yeah. then you better release your voice. If you yeah. want to release power, then you better release your praise. It's carrying with it a tone and a sound that will set the course for victory in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you better write that down. You're going to need to praise your way through 22. And that's ministering to you. You might type it in on the chat and say, that's me! That's me. That that's ministering to because 2022 is not going to be la, 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 la. except for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You will walk above it. You will walk over it. You will walk through it. Are you listening to me, church? He will make a way where there is no way because he is your God. What he is telling us right now is if you'll take your word, you'll take your staff. He says, he said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? Staff. He said, stretch forth your staff. Stretch forth your word. Begin to speak over 2022 what it is that you want God to bring to pass. And he said, on that day, you shall declare a thing and I shall establish it for you. Amen. This is why we talk about vision at the beginning of the year. It's why I remind you as the year goes, hey, did you take out your vision sheet? Uh, have you taken a look at it? Just stuff it in the back of the sock drawer. <laughs> right? I have them. I actually was looking at one on my dresser from 2018. And God is ready to overwhelm you with blessing. Yes. Woo! Oh, Glory! Yeah. Yes. I'm walking in it. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. It's a year of double Adar, which means that joy is double. Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's get into it. Before I shaped you in the womb, Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, I knew all about you. This is God talking to you, say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations. That's what I had in mind for you. We all have specific assignments. Somebody say, I have an assignment. I have an assignment. You have an assignment from God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark is here. We'll pick on him. His assignment is to be an electrician. Yeah. That's his assignment. You see, everybody thinks, oh, there must be something different. No, no, no. What you're good at. Right. Come on. Amen. What you find easy that other people find a challenge. Right. That's your assignment. Right. Let me help you find your call. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't a call have something to do with the pulpit? It can. I'm called to the pulpit. Amen. But listen, don't you dare step into this thing unless you're called to it. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Your words won't go past the pulpit. Amen. Are you listening to me? Ha hallelujah. Any more than you would want me doing your electricity. <laughs> Bad things would happen yeah. often, <laughs> immediately, including to the person that flipped the swift deer of God in heaven. Hallelujah. I can tell you stories about that. I won't. We all have a specific assignment. Say, I have, I have a specific assignment. A specific it's assignment. specific to you. Other people may have it. But uh, the, the assignment that you have, but it is specific to you. God has given you the gifts, the skills, the talents, the abilities. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And He has placed them in you. And He is expecting you to use those gifts, those talents, and those abilities to advance His kingdom. Yeah. What? Yeah, if you do the job right, if you're a painter, right? If you're an electrician, if you're a carpenter, if you're a mechanic, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a preacher, God is expecting you to do the job yeah. right. Amen. He's expecting you to use the gifts, the talents, the skills, and the abilities that He has given you right. to advance His kingdom. Right. You may get garner a reputation. You know what? Every time I ask that guy to do something, it gets done right. right. Yeah. What a reputation to have. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're all looking at me funny. Come on, let's get after it. I am amped up. Yeah. Glory to God. Verse 6. But I said, hold it, Master God, look at me. I don't know anything. I'm only a boy. We've all got excuses. I'm too short. I'm too tall. I'm too old. I'm too white. I'm too black. I'm too brown. I'm too yellow. 
Come on, I'm two. But pick your two. We've all got excuses. God isn't even listening. Let me say that again. That's coming out of me with force. He's not even listening because that's not faith. He's not even listening. He's not interested in your excuses. Oh, this seems to be kind of harsh. No, no, no. He's not harsh. He's just not going to entertain your pity party. Right. I said he's not going to entertain your pity party. He's going to say, hey, I called you to be a champion. Ah! You like where my help yeah. just showed up. Come on. Go ahead and Glory to God. Go ahead and preach. Woo! Woo! Glory! He has stamped a champion on the inside of every one of us. We are created in the image and likeness of the most successful being in the universe. Yeah. And we can sit down and we can wallow in how we don't have and didn't have and can't have and won't have. And we can wallow in all that. And God going, I've given you everything you need for life and godliness by the glory and the knowledge of he who has called you. That is me. I have called you. I have qualified you. I've placed my gifting in you. I've put my stamp of approval on you. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me, church. If you've got God's approval, whose else approval do you need? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to help somebody. Are you listening to me? You know the number one reason that young ladies have sex before marriage and the number one reason that young men use drugs is to be accepted. It's to be accepted. Are you listening to me? I'm on a mission to stamp it out. Oh, I've got quiet in this Presbyterian church. That's a pretty big job. No, it's not a pretty big job. It's an impossible job. Go ahead I said it's impossible. Go ahead and talk about it. I was talking to God about it the other day. I said that's impossible. It's it. The, I, the, the, it's coming out of me in tongues. You ever had the devil come and say that's impossible? You can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not big enough. You don't have enough of a voice. Come on. You're not strong enough. You can't do that. Who do you think you are? It's impossible. And I turned to the devil because I was walking the dog. And I said, impossible is right in my God's wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah. Because all things are possible to him that believes. Yeah. But there's nothing impossible for my God. He can take you from the brokeny, 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 brokenness. And put you in the second chair. Yeah. Answering Ooh. to Pharaoh himself. So good. He took Joseph from prison. He took Joseph from prison and put him in the second chair, bowing only his knee to Pharaoh. What about you? Well, listen, if you're going to do that, hear me, church, then you're going to have to cultivate Joseph's mindset. You're going to have to praise God yeah. in the midst of the prison. Yep. You yep. have to go down there in the stink Amen. and the muck and the wow. filth and it's not working out and nothing seems to be going my way. Go, oh, God, I love you. Oh, God, I worship you. Oh, you're good. No, I love this. The whole world can turn its back on me. God, I'm never going to turn my back on you. It's me and you, God. We got this. Amen. 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 And that's not going to be just for a minute. Because if you're the devil, you're going to come right at you tomorrow morning at 735. Just as you're rolling out of the rack. I'm sorry, 415. As you're rolling out of the rack. He likes to cake his beatings early. <laughs> right? Listen, that's how the devil does you. This is how the devil does me. Right? Did you, did you read the story where, where uh, 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 Jesse sends David up to the line to see how his sons are doing, brings him up with bread and cheese? Right? Because David's just a little shepherd boy. Right? And, and Goliath is there with all the Philistines and they're in the Valley of Allah. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you remember the story? And when he gets up there and David hears what this Philistine has to say. Who is this uncircumcised, yeah, right? no good, three sandwich eating? Who does he think he's talking to? Yeah. Now listen to me. The only way David could do that is because of all the time he spent out in the fields alone with God, where nobody was watching him. What about you on Monday when you're alone with God and nobody's watching and nobody's encouraging you to praise God in the midst of your storm? David was out there writing, oh God. Oh, you're the keeper of life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yeah. That's what he's writing. Yeah. And the Bible says that in the morning, Goliath had come out and make a challenge. In the evening, Goliath had come out 
and make a challenge. Yeah. And in the morning, Goliath had come yeah. out. And if you ever have something that's just dogging you morning, noon, and night, the last thing you're thinking about before you go to bed, and the first thing you're thinking about, you, have you ever had that encounter? Yeah. I've got your antidote. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because yeah. there's going to be nobody around you on, on Monday morning. There's going to be nobody around you on Wednesday afternoon when the boss says, are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We all have our excuses, church. Right. It's my job to help you kick them away. Right. Somebody say no excuses. No excuses. You're going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The same excuse you've been using for the last 20 years to limp your way through Christianity, God's told me, no more limping. Right. No, more lit no more using that crutch. Right. You're too old. You're too young. Come on. You're too white. You're too black. Mm -hmm. You're too female. You're too male. You've got that toxic masculinity. Right? <laughs> it's all nonsense. And it's all excuses. And it's all designed to distract you from what it is that God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Right. Glory to God. Glory to God. You're going to face some challenges. Hallelujah. God says, don't say I'm only a boy. I'll tell you where to go and you'll go there. And I'll tell you what to say and you'll say it. Don't be afraid of a soul. Somebody say, fear not. Fear not. Listen, devil, I'm coming. And all of heaven is coming with me. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the angelic host, everybody's showing up. We're taking over enemy held territory. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in verse 9, Jeremiah 1 and 9, God reached me, reached out, and he touched my mouth. He said, Look, I put my words in your mouth, yeah. hand delivered. See what I've done? I've given you a job to do. Are you I want you to pay attention? Somebody say, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. It says, I've given you a job to do among the nations and the governments. Right. We have a job to do. Yeah, it's a red letter day. Woo! It's a red letter day. Your job, somebody say, this is my job, my job. is to pull down, to tear down, to, tear down. to, take, apart, to take apart, and demolish, and, demolish. and then start over again building and planting. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Your help is not found in the government. Nope. Your help is not found in the systems of men. Your job is to pull down, tear apart, right. break up, pull up, right. and then rebuild. Right. And listen to me. The only way you're going to do that is with the Word of God. That's right. The only way you're going to do that is by the power of God. Right. Amen. I, listen, that doesn't mean you go storm the Capitol building. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, you know, I love Christians, but man, we do the silliest things. Mm -hmm. I, we do. We go outside of abortion clinics Come on. with aborted fetuses on a placard. Yeah, and we stick them in the face of a 16-year-old girl that's already terrified and said, Turn around, you're terrible! Here's this little girl, young lady, mm -hmm. right? looking for help, looking for hope. Yeah. Come on. And the Christian's screaming at her. I shared this story before. I'm going to share it again. There was a young lady going into an abortion clinic. But there was a genuine Christian woman there. She was outside the clinic praying. She wasn't walking back and forth with a placard in her hands with an aborted fetus on the placard screaming you know, terrible things at young ladies walking in there. Murderer! Does that sound like anything you want to be called? Well, that's what they're doing. Christians are doing it thinking that they're going to affect change that way. Because they're trying to fight a spiritual battle against the spirit of murder right. doing something in the natural. The devil's more than happy to have you parade up and down the sidewalk. Yeah. Or storm the Capitol building. But this lady said, listen, sweetheart, don't go in there. Come with me. Yeah. Yeah. Come, no, 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 come, come with me. I'll bring you to the doctor. We'll get you some prenatal vitamins. Yeah. You can live with me in my house. You can yeah. stay with me. Don't kill the baby. Right. I'll help you. So the young lady said, okay. 
and Israel Hooten was born. And he is one of the foremost worship leaders on the face of the planet today. Are you listening to me? That's what we're supposed to be doing. Christians who demand their right while abdicating their responsibilities, I'm on a mission to stamp it out. You want to do something effective against the spirit of murder? Come and join us Thursday nights in prayer. Yeah. Because prayer makes tremendous power right. yeah, available. Uh, help me reach these young people in the town of Wallingford. Help me reach young ladies and fill them with so much self-esteem. You know, God esteem? Mm -hmm. yeah. That the first guy that comes down the pike to talk to old baby, you butterfly. Well, that's a little old school. That just means, that's, that's old school. Not even, that's not even used before my time. <laughs> <laughs> right? She's not going, okay. If I have sex with him, all my girlfriend, I'll be accepted by everybody. Right? When one of their peers comes by with a joint and says, come on, man, let's go smoke. Come on, let's go snort a line. Let's go sniff some heroin. They'll have so much God respect on the inside of them. They go, no, I don't need that. I'm good. I love that. That's what my kids would say. I'm good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, are you ready to get into it? Because I've just been trying to get a hold of your spirit, trying to get a hold of your heart to tell you that God has a specific assignment for you and He's given it to you. Yeah. Right? Now, we've given you these vision sheets. It's your responsibility to get in front of God. It's your responsibility to carve out time. It's your responsibility. Right. Somebody say, it's my responsibility. My responsibility. To sit and get quiet with Him yeah. and allow Him to speak to your heart about what it is He wants you to do. Yeah. Right. Are you listening to me? There's a, there, there can be an overall strategy, an overall arc of your life. Amen? And then specific things that He wants you to get done in a specific time frame. Right, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, five minutes on Monday morning and then six minutes on Thursday night and two minutes on Friday evening and eight minutes on a Sunday morning isn't going to get you there. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, wow, he's being tough this morning. Yeah, because listen, it's serious business. God is, listen to me, God is not out of grace. Right. He's not out of grace. He'll never run out of grace. He's running out of time. Right. The Bible says that he is like a husband, husbandman waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. Right. Well, time is growing short. Adam's lease is just about up on the planet. Mm -hmm. Amen? We're, we're going to be called home pretty soon. Yeah. And we need to be about his business. Or do you want to stand in front of the seat of Christ and say, oh, I was too afraid. Hmm. You know, it sounded like a lot, and I just didn't feel like it. Come on. Because some of these assignments are big. Yeah, they are. Right? And some of them just seem like they're big. You know, we'll say reaching the state of Connecticut seems like it's big, not in God's eyes. Huh? Reaching the country. How do you reach the country from Connecticut? How do you reach the country from Wallingford, Connecticut? Well, listen, it's nothing to God. Just the efforts we're doing, we're going to have a meeting about it this afternoon, but just the efforts that we're doing, yeah. nearly a thousand people a month are watching what we're doing. Yeah. Right? And I used to say all the time, you know, because this was the phraseology, that, you know, we're trying to go, go get those people that will never darken the door of a church. Well, guess what? I need them to darken the door of the church. I want them to darken the door of the church. Not so I can sit there and say, look how many people we're running. Right? But the Bible says when it gets darker, and as it gets darker, right. don't forsake the assembling together of the brethren because we need to be strengthening and encouraging one another. Right. Yeah. Y'all need some faith buddies. <laughs> mm. How many of you have faith buddies? I got faith buddies. I got people I call up in a pinch and say, hey, listen, I'm in it. And they go, okay, you're in it. We're with you. <laughs> I'm in your corner, Doc. I'm in it. I tell people when they're going through sickness, listen, just shoot me a text. I'm in it. I don't want to hear about the symptoms. Right? right? I don't want you to rehearse. Oh, I got pain here. I got a lump there. I got this. I got that. No, no, no. I don't want you to rehearse what you got going on. I want you to rehearse the answer. Yeah. Oh, by his stripes, I'm here. I'm here. By his stripes, you are healed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He sent his word to heal and to deliver you. Yeah. 
We're in your corner. We're pulling for you. We're speaking the word of life over your circumstance, over your situation. We're breathing life back into something that's dead. Whew. Glory to God. Well, it's taken me two weeks to get to where we're getting to now. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Luke chapter 5. Are you ready? I'm ready. Because you're going to face some serious challenges. You're going to have wonderful opportunities to quit. Yep. Your flesh will give you every excuse as to why you can't. Right. Your eyes are going to say, can't be done. Your ears are going to hear, it's impossible for you. We're going to stuff so much faith into you. Hallelujah. You know, my son's a mechanic. He'll allow me. Well, Rob, you're a bit of a mechanic too, right? <laughs> What's that? You got 800 horse to the wheel? Almost. Almost 800 horse to the wheel. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about broke down, got going along on a cylinder, and get, trying to get up to get, getting your friends to help you push out. No, no, no. I'm talking about 800 horse to the wheel. I'm talking about hitting hills and catching air on the other side. Going across the finish line at 150 miles an hour, no parachute with your hair on fire. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Glory! Oh. See, you're all getting the vision for it. <laughs> I know Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you say, that sounds like a lot of preacher hype. It's not. It's how we're supposed to be living. Filled with faith. Yeah. Filled with joy. Filled with peace. Filled with His presence. Because there's enough woodpeckers out there pecking holes in the side of your boat. We gotta listen, we gotta fill up the holes. Did you ever read the story about the ark? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Number one, God says to Noah, build an ark. You know what Noah's first question was? What's an ark? <laughs> Never heard of one. One's never been needed. What's an ark? Well, it's made out of wood and it floats. Why? Because it's going to rain. Noah's next question. What's rain? Because it's never rained. Mist came up from the ground to water the plants. So talk about not knowing anything about anything. I, you know, it's almost at a point where you want to go get an amateur that knows nothing about nothing to do something for the right. kingdom of God because the rest of us overthink yep. it. Yep. Noah just said, okay, yep. let's, let's go build an ark. Yep. And, and if you read the story, you know that he did. He was very successful. Yep. Amen. But the Bible says that he covered it inside and out with pitch. He built it out of gopher wood. Don't ask me what gopher wood is. Right? <laughs> but he covered it inside and out with pitch which is the same word translated in the New Testament, blood. I'm preaching. Glory to God. Go ahead and preach. Glory. Yeah. Well. Oh, you've been washed by the blood. Yeah, right. Inside and out. You did it. You're the righteousness of God Amen. in Christ. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 that you will rule in this life. Somebody say rule. rule. And you'll reign in this life. Through the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. You see, we're supposed to be ruling and we're supposed to be reigning. Now, you might be experiencing a little less than that right now. But that's why you're here. So that's why you're here. Amen. To get from where you are to where you should be. Amen. I need to get from where I am now to where I should be. Amen. We're not lowering the bar. God's raising the bar. Are you listening to me? So he says, build an ark, cover it inside and out with pitch. Be covered by the blood. Right? Get into the ark and be saved. Get into Christ and be saved. You know, we, we, we overlook these things. When you take a look at God talking to Moses about building the tabernacle, and he says, I want you to build um, uh, the, uh, the mercy seat. And oh my. <laughs> And I want you to build an ark. Hmm. Well, he tells Noah to build an ark. He says, cover it inside and outside with the blood. And then he tells Moses, but well, listen, here, you should also uh, build the ark for the covenant. You know, it's going to carry the uh, tablets that the original Ten Commandments said. Moses broke and he came down off the side, right? And it's going to carry in it a, a, a big jar of manna. 
and it's going to carry into the rod that budded when, when Aaron, you know, pro proving that Aaron was the high priest. And he said, you're to make it out of Shittim wood. I can go down that road. Yeah, I see the look. I'm not going to go down that road, but you can determine what Shittim wood is. It's probably not very good wood. Uh, I can tell you that it is twisted. It's Shittim wood. It's, it's Shittim wood. It's twisted and it's gnarly and, and it needs to be sanded and it needs to be shaped. And yeah. you and I are, you know, the sign of a man, the symbol of a man is wood. And we, we need to be sanded. We've got some stuff that needs to be yeah. taken off and we need to be shaped and molded into the image of all and glory to God. And he says, make it out of Shittim wood, but cover it inside and out with gold. Yeah. You see, your whole life in Christ is covered inside and out in gold. Yeah. <clears throat> What's gold a sign of? Well, we saw that when we studied the Magi coming to see Jesus at the house. Not the manger. At the house. <laughs> they showed up with gold. Right. Sign of nobility. Right. Come on, a sign of deity. You're created in the image of God. It got quiet in here. I'm glad this is sinking in on you. You begin to go to hold some of this truth? Mm. That you're created for more than this? Just squeaking out in existence, scratching out in existence? Hallelujah. It's time to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. It's time to stop having more month than check. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody help me! Yeah. Yeah. It's time to have more than enough. It's time to have so much God yeah. that all of your needs are supplied right. by His riches and glory yeah, in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you there in Luke 5? Yeah. Okay. Because we're going to get into it. Luke chapter 5. On one occasion, Jesus was preaching to a crowd on the shore of Lake Galilee. Somebody say, this is an actual event. This is an actual event. A vast multitude of people were pushing to get close to Jesus to hear the word of God. Oh, that that would be the case today, that yeah. people would be pushing to get into a church right. to hear the word of God. Well, let's right. not go down that road just yet. He noticed that two fishing boats were at the water's edge with the fishermen nearby rinsing their nets. Say, everybody was out of the boats. Everybody yeah. was out of the boats. And then Jesus climbed into the boat belonging to Simon Peter, and he said to him, let me use your boat, push off a short distance away from the shore so I can speak to the crowd. And Jesus sat down and he taught the people from the boat. Right. And when he had finished, he said to Peter, now row out into deep water. Yeah. Somebody say, launch out. Launch out. Row out into deep water. Right. It's time to stop playing patty cakes with God. Right. Yeah. I didn't come here this morning to cut eggs with you. I didn't, I didn't come to tuck you in and tell you a story. I'm coming to tell you this morning, it is time to launch out. Yeah. Amen. It's time to go past the comfort zone. Time to get off the shore. Come on. It's yeah. time to go out into the deep water. Get into the deep things. Of God. Ezekiel saw a river that flowed from the throne. And first he went into his ankle. And then he went into his knee. And then he went into his hip. And then he went in. Woo! Where it was over his head. And that's where God has called us. That's where God has called us. The church today, we've been playing around the edges. And sometimes we get up to the knees. And sometimes we even get up to the hips. We think we're doing something when we get up to the hips because the presence of God begins to get so strong. Come on. We've had it happen in our Thursday night prayer meetings where the presence of God gets so we go, wow, this is God. It can only be God. Listen to me. We're only getting into up to our hips. Yeah. We're not even scratching the surface of what it is He's trying to loose into the earth today. And the question is, will we choose to be the vessels that He uses? So yeah. we say, launch out. Launch yeah. out. Launch out. Launch out. Choose to be a vessel. Yeah. I find it very. Uh, I wasn't going to start teaching. I'm going to start teaching. I find it interesting that Jesus gives us the choice. Yeah. He asks every one of us, push out. Why? Because I'm trying to get something to the people on the earth, and they're pushing up on me, and I just need a little help. I find it amazing that Jesus, the Son of the Living God, asks us to be part of ministry with Him. Who am I talking to? Yeah. He wants us involved in ministry. Right. Right. He wants us involved in reaching people. He says, hey, Amen. listen, I'm trying to get this job done. They're pushing up on me. Look, can we? Can, can you push out? Right. 
so that I can teach? Can you go just a little bit deeper so that I can teach? Right. I, I need you to stay with me. Yeah. Can you just go just a little bit so that I can yeah. teach? Yeah. Right? And what does Peter do? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Why? It's not costing me nothing. Right. It's no big deal to push out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? But how many of you know that Peter's a fisherman by training? Yeah. He's been working all night long, hasn't he? Uh, let me go back and read it mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm, on to, I'm on to something here. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It says to him, he says, uh, let me use your boat, push it off a short distance away from the shore so I can speak to the crowd. And Jesus sat down and he taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished, he said to Peter. Now, now, yeah. row out into deep water, yeah. launch, and cast your nets and you'll have a great catch. Master Peter replied, I've just come back from fishing all night long and I haven't caught a thing. But if you insist, we'll go down, uh, we'll go out again. Right. If you insist. <laughs> we'll go out again. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm doing you a big favor now, Jesus. Because I was going to go home and I was going to go to bed because I'm tired. But if you insist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll let our nets down because of your word. Mm -hmm. Can I? Some of us are so... I, my heart is breaking. Some of us are so busy with the thing we call life. What it is that we're called to do. Right. Huh, we got our phones, we got texts, and we've got emails, and we've got Facebook, and we've got Twitter, and we've got this, and we've got... And we're so busy, caught up in life. Well, I tell you what, show me what you're connected to, and I'll show you what's controlling you. Right. Let me say it to you like this. What you're bowing to on the way up the mountain right. is what you'll serve when you get to the top. Mm -hmm. That's the mountain. Yeah, so. so we get so caught up in our lives and so caught up in, i got to get this done, i got to get that done, the kids in the washing room, the cats in the dog, and the dog's got to get the dog, the dog, the dog, the dog, the dog, the dog. We got all of this stuff going on, and Jesus is like, listen, would you just launch out? Yeah. Would you, would you trust me at my word? Yep. And see, he's talking to every single person in this room right now. Will you trust me at my word? Right. Because most of us are like Peter. I have been busting my hump. <laughs> 23 and a half hours a day, breaking big rocks into little rocks. I have been throwing the net. All, my shoulder is sore from throwing the nets all night long. And my arms are aching from pulling them in and getting nothing. And you want me to do what? Listen, by the way, Jesus, you know what the issue is? You're not really a fisherman. You're one of those carpenters. And listen, they're, they're lunkheads. You, 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 don't, you, don't know what, you don't know what you're doing. I'm, I'm a fisherman. And the reason we fish at night is because the fish can see the nets. So that's why we fish at night. Because they can't see the nets. But you're telling me to go out into the deep water and throw a net that the fish can see. You're telling me to do the impossible. And I'm the professional. You know, the trouble is, Jesus, you're just not listening to me. And Jesus is saying, if you'll just launch out. If you'll just take a step of faith and take me at my word. Some of you need to take a step of faith and tithe it. Oh, 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 I felt it. Did you feel that? There was a shift. <laughs> there was a shift, right? Oh, here we go. Listen, when we came home from Teen Challenge, you remember, I'm making $150 a week, and we're taking $15. Why? Because that's the tithe. When you have $150, and you take 15 of it, <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to, but some of you is just about taking a step of faith mm -hmm. and trusting Him at His word. Yeah. Oh, if you'll just take a step of faith into a new job. What? Yeah, the Lord has been dealing with me about starting a business. Uh, but I'm very, very comfortable where I am. <laughs> and I, you know, the devil I know is much better than the devil I don't know. 
Uh, I'd like to tell you the story of a very, very famous man right now who is alive today, uh, whose father was actually a very funny man. He was a comedian, and he was very good at it. But you can't support a family being a comedian. There's no money in it. There's not enough money. And so he did the same thing. He finished up school and he got his degree in accountancy and he went and he became an accountant for a major company. And then that company fired him and let him go because he took the sure thing. Now, I'm not saying don't go to school. I didn't say that. This is this man's particular case. And now the whole family is living in a van because he took the safe way. And here's Jesus. Just launch out. Just take a step of faith. Just, just trust. Tr tr you trust me? Do you trust me? His son. Well, I tell you what. Who isn't a Christian, right? And who decided that he was funny and he was going to be a comedian and he was in that line of work, wrote himself a check for ten million dollars when he was broke, had nothing, zero point zero, right? Wrote himself a check and put a date on it, $10 million. He said, one day I'm going to cash this check. And less than a month before that check was to come due, he got a movie deal for $10 million. And his father never saw his success, so he took that check for $10 million. When his father died, he put it in his breast pocket of his jacket. And you call that man Jim Carrey. If he was broken, he broke broke. He says, well, I sent that check out into the universe. Well, we know that what he did is a biblical principle. Right? He released it to the universe. I don't think you should trust anything to the universe because the universe is a scary place. And unless you've got God, right? What am I talking about? I'm talking about taking a step of faith. He said, launch out. It's going to be unfamiliar. You know what? You know what the issue is? When, when, you're, when you're in your little boat, you know, your little life, and it's close to the shore, it's not very rocky. Come on. And it is safe, isn't it? And you can see the bottom. And Jesus said, listen, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to enter into your life. And for a season, we're going to be close to the shore. And I'm going to use you as much as you'll allow me to use you while we're close to the shore. But listen, if you really want me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's go out into the deep water. Yeah. Let's listen. We'll go out there into the unknown. Who am I talking to? Mm -hmm. It must be somebody in the chat. Just go ahead and type that in here. Launch out. Launch out. Launch out. He said, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. Church, what happens when you come to the end of yourself? Mm -hmm. What happens when everything you've done has blown up in your face? Mm -hmm. Come on, and you're looking at a pile of ashes going, Well, <laughs> we're way past Humpty Dumpty at this point. It, it's just not. There's, it's not going. It's not going to go back together. This is destroyed. I don't know what we're going to do with this. I was like that as a kid. Probably still like that as an adult. But, you know, I had GI Joe with Kung Fu grip when I was a kid. That's right. Mm -hmm. well, what I found out is that you know GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip was held together with an elastic. Yeah. You know, if you pull on one of the legs hard enough, the elastic will expose itself. And if you cut the elastic, you can get that bad boy to fall apart. Some of you shaking your shaking heads know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what happens after you cut the elastic? It ain't never going back together. You can try, and you can, try, you can jam, you can stick, you can stuff. It's not going back together. How many of you right now, that's where you're at? The G.I. Joe has fallen apart. <laughs> right? It's in a pile. It's in a heap. And God going, do you trust me? What? Do you trust me? You've done it your way. But Proverbs chapter 3 says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. As long as you're trying to figure out, God doesn't have to. Let me say that again slowly. That was a lesson he taught me. 
as long as son, as long as you're trying to figure it out, I don't have to. But the minute you let it go, the minute you say, God, there's nothing I can do about this, so you're going to have to work on it. And when you get the answer, when you get the solution, which you have right now, when you get it across to me, I'll move yeah. in that direction. Because right? sometimes I'm a little slow on the uptake. That's changing now. Because I'm changing my vocabulary. I hear from heaven, I hear from heaven quickly. And then I move in that direction. Launch out. You listen to church. Launch out. Launch out. I've done it my way, Jesus. I'm a professional fisherman. I was out there all night long, busting my hump. I got nothing to show for it. Nevertheless, did you hear what he said? At your word. Somebody say the word of the Lord. Lord. Is launch out. Launch out. Launch out. I'm going to give you just a little bit more. Just come back next week for the rest of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, he says here, if you insist, we'll go out again and let down our nets because of your word. And when they had pulled up their nets, I, I was stunned. Is that that? Do you have the Passion Translation? When they pulled up their nets, when they pulled up their nets, when they pulled up their nets, and I went, Jesus was helping Peter. When they pulled up their nets, yeah. here's Jesus working side by side with yeah. Peter, helping him yeah. fall. Yeah. When they pulled up their nets, <laughs> glory to God! Yeah. Woo! They were shocked to see a huge catch of fish and their nets were ready to burst. Yeah. And they waved to their business partners in the other boats for help. And they ended up completely filling both boats with fish until they both began to sink. Yeah. Now I'll let you go. I want to drive this point home. Can you take it? Yeah. Jesus asked for permission to step onto Peter's boat. Yeah, he did. Which tells me that God has given each of us a platform. Right. Yeah. He's given us a job, a skill, a talent, and ability. Yeah. And Jesus says, let me use your job, your platform, your talent, your platform, your skill, your platform, your ability, your platform. Let me use it. Yeah. To be a blessing to the people. Yeah. Yeah. But you and I, because you let me use it, we're going to launch out. Somebody say right. we. You see, you think you're doing it alone. We are going. Somebody say he's with me. Yeah, with me. We're going to go out. Yeah. And we're going to catch a net breaking, both sinking load of resource. Hear me, church. That you will have to call your business partners in. And help you bring it all in. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Stand your feet, everybody, and pray. Father, thank you for your holy written word. Lord, it is good. It is medicine to all of our flesh. So, Father, here, let me get agreement. Father, I thank you. I speak your word now over these.